This is Zahid part one. Is there a disturbing trend in corruption cases involving Malaysian politicians? Recent cases involving senior politicians accused of corruption show a troubling pattern. They seem to secure discharges and acquittals. Here are some examples. Number one, Dato Sri Bung Mokta Radin. Bung Mokta Radin is famous for other reasons, but he was the MP for Kinabatangan Sabah. He was the former chairman for Felkra. Felkra is a statutory body for developing rural areas. On the 3rd of May 2019, Bung was charged with two counts of accepting bribes of RM 2.2 million and RM 262,500 respectively. This was allegedly an inducement to obtain Felcra approval to invest RM 150 million in public mutual unit trusts. On the 19th of June 2019, he was charged for receiving a cash sum of RM 337,500 from unit Amana consultant under the name of his wife, Madam Zizi Izete. His wife was charged on three counts of abetting her husband. On the 2nd of September 2019, the High Court ruled that there was a miscarriage of justice when the Sessions Court asked the couple to enter the defence. On the 7th of September 2023, Bong Mukta and his wife were discharged and acquitted from all those charges. Next, Zahid Hamidi's two prosecutions and discharge. Zahid was the Deputy Prime Minister under the Najib government. He had been a member of the cabinet since 1995. From May 2013 to May of 2018, he had held the powerful post of Home Affairs Minister. When the Barisan government fell, Zahid had two sets of charges filed against him. The first set of charges concerned a charity called Yayasan Akal Budi. Roughly translated into English, the name means Foundation for a Good State of Mind. The allegations there were that Zahid had, in breach of trust, appropriated vast sums of monies from the charity. On the 19th of October, 14th of December 2018 and the 20th of February 2019 respectively, Zaid was arraigned with 47 charges. These included 27 counts of money laundering, 12 counts of criminal breach of trust and 8 counts of bribery. On the 4th of September, the prosecution declined to pursue the charges. The court ordered Zahid be discharged, but that it did not amount to an acquittal. The second set of 33 charges concerned what has now been come to be known as the foreign visa case. In June of 2019, Zahid Hamidi was charged with receiving US dollars 9.38 million in bribes. The charges alleged that while Zahid was the Home Minister, a company called Ultra Kirana Sindrian Burhat had paid him bribes to extend the company's contract to operate one-stop centres and an integrated visa system. The foreign visa case only started on the 24th of May 2021. On the 23rd of September 2022, the trial judge Justice Datuk Muhammad Yazid Mustafa acquitted Zahid of the charges. He ruled that the prosecution had failed to show prima facie evidence against the accused. That acquittal is currently under appeal. The third is Tansri Mohidin Yassin, the MCO Prime Minister. He was a cabinet minister since 1995. He was Prime Minister from March 2020 to August 2021. On the 10th of March 2023, he was charged 
with abuse of power for receiving US dollars 51.44 million or 232 million ringgit from three companies, Bukhari Equity, Neptourist and Mempho, into a bank account belonging to his political party, Bursatu. He was also charged with money laundering of the government's COVID funds amounting to US dollars 51 million or 195 million ringgit. On the 15th of August 2023, he was acquitted. The court ruled the charges were defective, baseless and vague. They lacked details on how the offences were committed, the court said. The next is the very famous Tantri Muhammad Isa Abdul Samad. Isa was a former chief minister of Negrisi Milan. He was also the chairman of Felda. It is a statutory body which had been set up to eradicate poverty by developing agricultural land and relocating and moving settlers into those lands. Felda receives vast sums of money from the government. In 2023, this year, the government will channel US dollars 3 billion into it. In December of 2018, Issa was charged with corruption and criminal breach of trust. He was accused of receiving RM3 million in the Maradeka Palace Hotel in Sarawak. However, in June 2020, he was acquitted of the criminal breach of trust charge. One reason for the acquittal was that there was no set procedure on how Felda approved investments above 100 million ringgit. The prosecution is now appealing against that acquittal. Now, in February 2021, he was found guilty of corruption charges. He was sentenced to six years in jail and fined RM 15.45 million. He is now appealing against his conviction and sentence. Number five on the list is the even more famous Tansri Musa Aman. Musa was the former chief minister of Sabah. He was also the chairman of the board of trustees of the Sabah Foundation. In November of 2018, Musa was charged with 35 counts of corruption. In March of 2019, Musa was charged with another 16 counts of money laundering. The corruption charges alleged that Musa had received US dollars 50.1 million from eight logging concessionaire companies. The second set of charges alleged that Musa had received US dollars 37.8 million and a further US dollars 2.5 million from several individuals. These were proceeds from allegedly illegal activities. In October of 2019, the prosecution withdrew five of the 35 bribery charges. And then on the 9th of June 2020, the prosecution withdrew all criminal charges against Musa. So the High Court acquitted Musa of all these charges. Now, this was even before his trial had begun. Would you like to know what the Attorney General said at that time? He said that there was a lack of documents from Hong Kong banks. He also said some witnesses were unavailable. Why these documents had not been obtained before Musa was charged? That is not explained. It's a great mystery. The AG's explanation in the Musa Aman case is identical to the explanation given in Zaid's case on the 4th of September 2023. Number six is Dato Sri Tanku Adnan Mansur. Tanku Adnan was a former Minister of Federal Territories under the Najib government. On the 16th of November 2018, he was charged with receiving two sets of bribes of RM 1 million ringgit from a property development company. He was also charged with receiving 2 million ringgit from one Chai Kin Kong. On the 14th of October 2019, after the prosecution case was over, the High Court ordered Thanko Adnan to enter 
his defense. On the 7th of December 2020, the High Court granted him a DNAA, a discharge not amounting to acquittal on charges concerning RM 1 million bribe. At the end of 2020, the court found that Thunku Adnan was guilty of the other 2 million ringgit charge. It sentenced him to 12 months of imprisonment. He was fined RM 2 million. Now, on the 16th of July 2021, the Court of Appeal acquitted him. On the 16th of November 2021, the prosecution withdrew its appeal to the Federal Court against the decision of the Court of Appeal which had acquitted Thanko Adnan. This was for a strange reason. Would you like to know what it is? The prosecution said that there was a new development in the case which needs further investigation. The prosecution said it was not sure how long they would need to investigate this development. The seventh is Dato Sri Ahmad Maslan. Ahmad Maslan is the Deputy Finance Minister. He was also the Secretary General of AMNO from March 2020 to March of 2023. On the 21st of January 2020, he was charged for not declaring RM 2 million ringgit that he had received from Najib, the ex-Prime Minister, and he didn't make this disclosure to the Inland Revenue Board. The second charge alleged that Maslan had given false statements to the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC. On the 21st of September 2021, the High Court acquitted Ahmad Maslan after he paid RM 1.1 million to compound the offence and the law allows this the prosecution withdrew all charges against him. Number 8 is Dato Sri Abdul Aziz Abdul Rahim. This is a gentleman who speaks in Tamil in Parliament. Aziz is Amno MP for Baling. On the 16th of January 2019 he was charged with three counts of accepting bribes mounting to RM 5.2 million in connection with road projects in Pera and Kera. He was also charged with 10 counts of money laundering for receiving RM 13.9 million from a company. He appealed to the Court of Appeal to have the charges struck out. On the 5th of September 2022, the Court of Appeal struck out four money laundering charges against him. Like Zahid, he submitted a representation to the Attorney General's Chambers. Nothing wrong with that. On the 23rd of September 2022, the Sessions Court granted him a DNAA order, a discharge not amounting to an acquittal. Then we come to the famous Lim Guan Eng. Lim Guan Eng was the Penang Chief Minister from March of 2008 to May of 2018. That year, Lim Guan Eng was made Finance Minister of Malaysia. In 2018, he was charged with two counts of corruption over his 2015 purchase of a bungalow below market value. On the 3rd of September 2018, the Penang High Court acquitted Lim and businesswoman Pang Lee Kun of all charges related to that purchase. On the 7th of August 2020, he was charged for soliciting a bribe over the Penang Undersea Tunnel for RM 6.3 million. That case is still ongoing. There are two minor exceptions to this laundry list. On the 20th of July 2020, Najib, the former Prime Minister, was convicted for criminal breach of trust, money laundering and abuse of power. The sum involved was in excess of US dollars 10 million. He has applied for a royal pardon. Will he get it? That is the question. His wife Rosma Manso was convicted of corruption charges amounting to US dollars 40 million and bribery amounting to US dollars 1.39 million. That case is on appeal. All this is a disturbing trend. The public needs very high levels of transparency and accountability from the prosecutors. The public prosecutor 
is also, as you might have realized, the Attorney General. The Attorney General needs to explain with greater detail why some of these charges were dropped. The public prosecutor needs to explain why some charges were defective, even in cases not involving Said Hamidi. With these troubling thoughts, I bid you goodbye. <laughs>